This ball is on top of a cliff. If this ball rolls off the cliff and falls down, when will the ball hit the ground? Now this is a projectile motion problem, and whenever you have a projectile that free falls from rest, you can always use this formula, which says the height of the projectile is equal to 1 half gt squared. Now since we want to know when the ball hits the ground, we're trying to calculate a time. So what I'm first going to do is multiply 2 on both sides of the equation to cancel the 1 half. I'll then divide both sides by g, which is gravitational acceleration, and then I'll take the square root of both sides, which will get the time by itself. So assuming we're on Earth and we know the height of the cliff, this equation will tell you when the ball hits the ground. So here we have a non-compressible fluid flowing through a pipe, and we want to know how fast the fluid is moving at this point. Now to solve this problem, we can use the continuity equation. The cross-sectional area at this point of the pipe is 8 square meters. The cross-sectional area at this point is 2 square meters. The velocity of the fluid as it travels through this cross-sectional area is 28 meters per second. So using algebra, I can solve for the unknown velocity. 2 times 28 is 56. And I can divide both sides of this equation by 8 to cancel the 8s on the left side. 56 divided by 8 is 7, meaning the magnitude of the fluid's velocity at this point of the pipe is 7 meters per second. We are going to solve this engineering problem in less than 60 seconds. So what we have is a heat engine, and we want to know how much work this heat engine does after 12 seconds. So what I can do is recognize that this engine absorbs a total of 4,000 joules of heat every second. Since I can see the waste heat discard rate is 2,500 joules per second, that means the rate at which this engine does work is 1,500 joules per second. I know this because these two numbers have to add to give you this number. And to calculate the work that's done after 12 seconds, I just need to take 1500 joules per second and multiply that by 12 seconds. Multiplying these two numbers, I can cancel the seconds, and 1500 times 12 should give you a value of 18,000 joules of work. So option D is the solution to this problem. We can calculate the work done by this heat engine. Now we are given that this engine is 30% efficient, and to calculate the efficiency of an engine, you need to take the work done by the engine and divide it by the heat absorbed from the hot reservoir. Now we are given the efficiency of the engine, which is 30%. As a decimal, this is equal to 0.3. You just divide this number by 100. The heat absorbed from the hot reservoir is 2500 joules. I can use some quick algebra to isolate the work by itself. So to calculate the work done by the engine, it's going to be 2500 joules times 0.3, which is equal to 750 joules of work. So let's see if here we have a spherical ball, and we want to calculate the moment of inertia for this ball. One of the first things I notice is that we're given the rotational kinetic energy. When dealing with rotational motion, the equation for kinetic energy is 1 half inertia times angular velocity squared. Now since I'm trying to calculate the inertia in this problem, I'm going to take both sides of this equation and multiply it by 2. This will allow me to get the 2's on the right side of the equation to cancel. Now from here, what I can do is take both sides of the equation and divide it by angular velocity squared. This will isolate the inertia by itself. The rotational kinetic energy is given to us as 400 joules, and the angular velocity is 50 radians per second. So the inertia is equal to 2 times 400 divided by 50 squared, which on a calculator is equal to 0.32 kilogram meters squared, and that's the answer. An aluminum block with a mass of 20 grams comes into contact with some sort of unknown metal. The block starts at a temperature of 70 degrees Celsius and finishes at a temperature of 20 degrees Celsius. How much heat was transferred from the aluminum block to the unknown metal if we ignore any heat loss to the environment. So to solve this problem, I'm going to use the heat transfer equation in thermodynamics, which is mass times specific heat times the change in temperature. So what I'm going to do is plug in the variables that we have. The mass is given to us as 20 grams. The specific heat capacity is given to us in the problem, which is the specific heat capacity for aluminum. The last thing I need to do is plug in the change in temperature, and the change in temperature is simply going to be the final temperature minus the initial temperature. So we can cancel the unit of grams, and we can also cancel the degrees Celsius, leaving us with just joules. And 20 times 0.89 times negative 50 will give you a value of negative 890 joules of heat. So this right here is the answer to the problem. 
All right, we have gotten to the circuit analysis portion of our electrical engineering series. So in this case, we have a capacitor circuit, and there are two equations you need to know for this video. Given these two equations, we're going to use that to analyze the circuit and get the total capacitance on the entire circuit. So we'll start with these two capacitors that we see that are parallel to each other, since the parallel equation is pretty easy. So we're simply going to have five plus five, which is the same thing as 10 microfarads. So these two capacitors will combine into a single 10 microfarad capacitor. Now we have two capacitors that are in series, which means I can go ahead and use the series equation down here. The first capacitor that I see is 10 microfarads. The second capacitor that I see is also 10 microfarads. 1 over 10 plus 1 over 10 should give you 2 over 10, and if you flip that fraction or take the inverse, you should get 5 microfarads. So we have gone ahead and broken this circuit down to a single 5 microfarad capacitor. So 5 microfarads is the total capacitance, and that's how you can analyze capacitor circuits.